Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was in, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray, not that you should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Father, he prays that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And they glorify, and Lord, he says, Lord, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, and, and, and they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And this is Jesus' prayer. And this is what he wishes. He prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. He prays for future believers. He prays that they would all have that relationship, that they would be one. Not that they would become one, but that they would be one. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the reading. And now, there is a uh, there is a, a few notes that we we need to know here. Um, the things that uh, uh, we talked about here in verse 3, for instance. Jesus, I'll read this. Jesus says in verse 3, He says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, what do we see in this particular verse? It says here that Jesus wants his disciples to have that experience that he has with the Father. It says to know the Father and the Son, to have that mineral experience. This is life eternal. It is not living without dying. It's not a, 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 a never ending life. That's not what it is. It's a higher quality of life that we get when we take life from Jesus Christ. This is, this is that life. It allows us to have uh, the mental experience with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Again, we see that uh, eternal life is really, it's a present reality and a future hope. I want to read something for you that, that really brings out the meaning of this present reality. If we go to John, and we've done this before, We've, we've studied John, the fifth chapter of John, and in the 24th verse, this is what Jesus said. 
Now remember in the fifth chapter, Jesus had performed a miracle in the fifth chapter. In the fifth chapter, he, he did a healing at the pool of Bethesda. Now it says here in the 24th verse, and we're talking about the reality of this eternal life. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believe on him that sent me, had everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. This is that present reality. If you accept Jesus Christ, you accept him, then you have eternal life. It's a present state. Now, it's also a future hope. The Bible says it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. But let's, let's take a look at, at the future hope as we look at Mark 10, uh, starting at verse 29. Listen to what uh, the disciple would say. Mark chapter 10, verse 29. We're trying to bring out uh, the meaning of this future hope of this eternal life. Verse 28, we'll back up just one. It says, Then Peter began to say unto him, the Lord that is, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. We have, we have given up everything and we are following you. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sister, mother and children, and lands with persecution, with persecution, and in the world to come, eternal life. This is a future hope. If you have given up all of these things, Jesus is saying, for his sake and for the sake of the gospel, then you would have received, you will, this, this is the hope, you will receive a hundredfold all of these when people reject you you know when your mother reject you when your father reject you when your brothers and sisters reject you have no fear Jesus is there and he will provide a new home a new family the church is now your family you'll be one 